The summer box office returns to normalcy. This from Deadline Magazine and Anthony DeHalessandro. It's going to be approaching the $4 billion mark, something it hasn't done in quite some time. But is it really back to normal? Or are there underlying numbers in a confluence of negative events that have impacted the theater industry over the last several years that show a much more dire picture? Let's talk about that. Here we go. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. About a week ago, this article came out from Deadline Magazine. Summer box office returns to normalcy, poised to hit $4 billion. More pressure on the AMPTP, that is the collective of studios that is negotiating against the WGA and SAG-AFTRA currently. This summer's domestic box office is set to cross $4 billion for the 13th year ever. The latest figures come from Comscore, and yes, we can give thanks to Barbenheimer, which has a combined stateside take of $856 million, repping 23% of the current running summer domestic box office of $3.797 billion. And of course, those figures were as of the date of August 22nd when this article was composed. Currently, this summer's ticket sales in 2023 are pacing 17% ahead of last summer, which minted $3.44 billion. A definite comeback from the pandemic's 2020 closure and studios' largely abandonment of theatrical day-and-date releases, which were littered across the summer of 2021. This summer is currently pacing 5.3% behind 2019, which amounted to $4.3 billion. Now, I want you to remember that 2019 number because that is key, and we're going to show you some reality on that in just a minute, and quite frankly, the results are somewhat terrifying. The highest grossing summer ever for the May through Labor Day weekend period was 2013, which grossed $4.755 billion, led by Disney Marvel Studios' Iron Man 3, which did $409 million. The summer box office has yet to gross $5 billion in a single season. Now, the first thing right off the bat you hear us talk about here on Valiant Renegade frequently is the increase in average U.S. movie theater ticket prices that have occurred over time with a particular sharp increase in the last two to three years since the pandemic and with all of the inflationary pressures and macroeconomic factors that come into play. This from the National Association of Theater Owners. In 2022, they calculated an average ticket price of $10.53. And by all indications, 2023 is going to be sharply higher than this, probably getting closer to $12 per ticket from what we're seeing. But look here, back in 2013, the average ticket price was about $8. So we've gone from an average ticket price of closer to $8 to what we expect in 2023 based on financial data that has been made publicly available so far from certain SEC filings from companies like AMC Theaters that we're going to see closer to $12 this year. That's an increase of nearly 50% over the past 10 years. So what you should notice right away is even though the dollar is being repped by theaters this summer, somewhere close to or perhaps what they're hoping for north of $4 billion by today or tomorrow, Labor Day, well, that is in line at least relatively close to what this 2013 big record was. But when you consider the average ticket price, you have to start wondering, where did all the people go? You see, if in 2013 people were spending closer to $12 a ticket, well, that summer box office would have been closer to $6 billion. And we can see here, put into graphical form, this also from the National Association of Theater Owners, look at a ticket price back in 1971. That's $1.65. Now, they've used the CPI to inflate it up to 2022 numbers and puts it at 1192. Now, of course, they show the actual ticket prices in 2022 of 1053. The consumer price index and say an individual industry, they don't match up perfectly. None ever do. The CPI is simply a macro level average of the inflationary index. And it doesn't factor in a lot of key things that people spend money on frequently day in and day out. But more recently, in the last 10 years especially, one of the things that seems readily apparent 
is that the average ticket price inflation has grossly outpaced the CPI. Now, certainly one of the things that factor into this is the advent of the PLF or premium large format screen. Things like proprietary PLF screens at Marcus Theaters or AMC or, for instance, IMAX branded screens. More and more theaters have been adding plenty of these over the last 10 years as people want the larger and better experience and they're willing to pay a premium fee above and beyond a typical movie ticket price to get into those bigger venues. What you're seeing here is the second quarter report. That's the quarter that ended June 30th in 2014, nearly 10 years ago, for AMC Theaters, the largest exhibitioner in the United States, and of course, the bellwether for the industry. When you're seeing this, I want you to look at this last line here. The attendance is quoted in thousands. That means that for the three months ended on June 30th, 2014, 50.1 million people had already showed up for that quarter. In June 30th of 2014, it was 54.3 million. For the six months ended, or in other words, from January 1st through June 30th, 94.9 million people had walked in and bought tickets in 2014. And through June 30th of 2013, 96.9 million had walked in. Unfortunately, there were no public filings for AMC back in 2013. That was prior to their public debut. But fortunately, in the 2014 reports that they filed with the SEC, they referenced 2013 numbers so that we could have them to use and show you here. What you also need to take into account is the number of screens operated 10 years ago. 4,900 screens, 4,968 in 2014, 4,937 in 2013. Now, that's actual physical screens. That's not locations. Both of those years repped about 350 some odd locations. You can go back and take a look at the slide. But remember that number of screens. Now, let's look at the most recent filing here from the second quarter of 2023. The quarter ended. The U.S. market, 50 million attended. In 2023, the six months up to that point, 82 million attended. Now, that's, of course, a lot more than what we got in 2022 and, of course, even more than 2021. And 2020 was effectively near zero thanks to you-know-what. Right off the bat, you think that's not terribly different, and you'd be correct, of course. It does look similar to attendance in 2014, but what about the years after 2014 and 2013? What was going on in 2019 in theaters right before the whole world shut down? In 2019, the six months that ended in the U.S. markets was 126, almost 127 million people that had walked into AMC theaters through that moment. Even looking back at 2018, 131.6 million. A lot of people want to stop and look at 2019 and say, well, that's the year that Avengers Endgame came out, one of the biggest movies of all time. 2018 still had more than 2019 by about four to five million. Now, remember, back in 2014, with the first report that we looked at, AMC really didn't have an international footprint. That didn't come until a few years later when they went public and they started expanding into international markets by buying international theater chains. So those figures that we had for 2013 and 2014 were the U.S. and Canada. Since then, you can see that AMC breaks out U.S. and international markets, which would be anything outside of the U.S. and Canada domestic, quote unquote, market. So that's why we're only going to quote the actual U.S. markets in this case so that we can be accurate and go apples to apples comparison from today versus 10 years ago. So looking at that near 127 million attendance figure in 2019, 131 million in 2018, and now we look at 2022 and 2023, we are talking about 50% more people, more butts in seats in 2019 and 2018 compared to today. And look at AMC Theater's reported average ticket sale price in 2023 for the six months ended, $11.81. What did I tell you? We're approaching $12 out there, and this is only for the first six months. Inflation is still climbing quarter over quarter. By the end of the year, that average ticket price is probably going to be above $12, especially with the $13 and $20 base prices for the Taylor Swift Eras Tour movie that's going to be landing at AMC in just about a month. And in 2019, that same quarter, the average ticket price $9.43 for the six months ended through 2019. That's an increase from then until now of about $2.50 or approaching 
30%. And you've heard us use that 30% figure a number of times. And this is why it's important. With 50% more people showing up to theaters in 2019 than they are today, at least through the six months ended of this year, that's a big problem for theaters. Sure, they're charging more money for those seats. And sure, they're offering bigger and more premium experiences with PLF and IMAX screens. But when you lose that many butts in seats, that means that theaters are also losing out on the highest profit margin business that they offer. And that's concessions, the popcorn, the drinks, the candy, the full service meals for the theaters that actually provide them. Look at the food and beverage revenue from 2018 and 2019 with the six months ended June 30th, 851 million. 861 million, respectively. Look at 2023, $816 million. And then look at the cost of the food and beverage in that same term $153 million in costs to buy the food and beverage that they sold to customers for $817 million almost. And then look at the food and beverage cost from 2019 at $137.9 million against a haul of $861 million. So, in other words, Theaters are spending more money to acquire that food and beverage, and they're selling it for radically higher prices. Think about when you go to the movie theaters now, what that bucket of popcorn costs today versus 2019. Think about when you go to the grocery store and buy that gallon of milk today versus 2019. So in other words, there are a lot fewer people showing up to go to the movie theaters. And in turn, of course, there are less concessions being sold, but the prices that theaters are charging have increased dramatically since 2019 to make up the gap. That means that as this audience continues to shrink, these theaters are going to have to keep charging more and more and more to stay afloat. Don't believe me? Well, check this out. Remember a few minutes ago when I showed you that the average number of screens, according to AMC's own financial report in 2013 and 2014, was around 4,500? Look at it today. Over 8 thousand screens that means they have increased their footprint in the market nearly double since 2013 and they're still pulling in the same actual dollar count with twice as many screens and a number of more locations to house those screens that means the underlying costs the operating costs of paying the rent and of course acquiring the labor to staff all those theaters and screens has gone up sharply and theaters right now are basically just treading water, it seems, with the number of people they actually have showing up, the butts in seats. Now, there are three major problems as to what has created this. Number one, of course, the pandemic shut down theaters and forced people into a new venue, and that was streaming, in many cases, day and date release, as the Deadline magazine correctly pointed out. That changed a lot of people's perception on going to the movie theaters, but over time, they started coming back. Number two, of course, is the rising prices, keeping people away from the big screens and instead, in some cases, staying home and watching streaming. But the big one out there that nobody wants to seem to talk about is this, is the fact that Hollywood simply is not cranking out the amount and quality of product that they used to do that would get people into the theaters. See, people go to theaters because they want the biggest and best experience that they can. And there is, frankly, nothing better than the 100-year-old tradition of America to go and see these things on the big screen. That has been diminished in recent years with a lack of very good and attractive content to get people into theaters. People are getting tired of the same old pablum that gets cranked out like cannon fodder day in and day out. And of course, when a truly great movie does come out, people run to go see it. Barbie is a great example, as is Oppenheimer. How about Top Gun Maverick last summer? How about Spider-Man No Way Home and Avatar 2? The way of water. There are things out there that will drive people to the screens. There's simply not enough of them anymore. And then think conversely about all the big budget, supposed to be blockbuster films that Hollywood generated to dump into theaters this summer that just didn't go anywhere. Things like Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. How about Little Mermaid underperforming? Even though it had a reasonable haul, it didn't get near the heights that Disney had hoped. Even things like Transformers, or how about The Flash? The list could go on and on. So going forward, theaters are going to have a lot of work to do, and Hollywood is going to be the biggest factor in that. Can they continue to crank out actual good movies to put butts in seats? And of course, the writer's strike and the actor's strike right now are going to be putting a lot of pressure on that, especially for 2024. And I think theaters already know that they have a big problem on their hands, even if they're not quite admitting it yet. And this is why I think we're going to see more things like the Taylor Swift concert, the Eras Tour, 
being brought into headline theaters, places like AMC, Regal, and Cinemark to make up the gap. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm concerned about this, and the theaters obviously know it, even if they're trying to sugarcoat reality. Well, that's marketing and PR spin for you folks. I want them to survive. I think they're an important part of our American zeitgeist, and they need to stay that way because there's simply no replacing the big screen. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and until next time, take care.